what's going on guys it's brian jack with superman's comics where we do a lot of comic and pop culture related content on this channel so if you're new here consider subscribing this is the bolo show we record at new comic book day evening and we premiere it on the channel thursdays at 9 p.m so it was a big day today with new comic book day bolo list came out for those that aren't aware bolo means be on the lookout this list comes out every week where we give you the first appearances the reader buzz the variant buzz and Jack's long-term play. As always, Jack creates the list, but the list is made up from all the social media, especially with everyone's input. So if you want to make sure something gets on the list, make sure your voice is heard and follow aka underscore Mr. Bolo on Instagram. But with that being said, this show is brought to you by slabbedheroes.com. Make sure you check out slabbedheroes.com, especially this Friday at 4 p.m., they have an awesome Transformers vs. Terminator number one, John Jang variant, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you and I both just recently reposted it on uh, Instagram after the uh, cover art reveal. We knew when this series got announced that there was an opportunity for some killer covers. It would just take some bold retailers to step up to do this kind of a crossover release, and we've got it with Slabbed Heroes and this John Jang cover. It's absolutely amazing. So that's going to be available on slabheroes.com this Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern. It's got multiple tiers available. You're going to be able to get a raw for $20. You're going to be able to get a guaranteed 9.8 for $79. You can get a guaranteed 9.8 signature series for $119 or a 9.8 signature series and remark for $199. That's going to be this Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern at slabheroes.com. I do want to mention that our other channel sponsor, Frankie's Comics. He has an awesome exclusive variant for this as well. We're going to now talk more about that at another time, though. Oh, yeah. But that's a fabulous cover as well. Real heat there, too. So with that being said, we're going to pull up the bolo list on the screen right now. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we cover first appearances. We cover reader buzz, variant buzz, and then there's a long-term play. We're going to get right into it. We're going to get into those first appearances. First appearance we're going to talk about right now is disregard the list. It's not Lewis. It's Lois Lane, number eight. And they're talking about Kiss of Death. Now, Jack and I are on this channel. We talk about first appearances a lot. This has a first appearance. He's following social media. But me personally, I don't think this is a first appearance because this character showed up in issue number seven. It's just I was I didn't see why issues were going for this much today. It's astronomical. I've seen stuff going for 28 bucks, 29 bucks, 30 bucks, the set for more than that. It's not first appearance to me because this character was in issue number seven. But I digress. Let you talk about it, Jack. Yeah, you know, this is a, a tricky subject to talk about. It's funny. And, you know, uh, shout out to those um, who brought up this topic on Instagram. I, I've really got to say that um, it was really nice to see somebody – say step up and say uh i don't agree with this but i'm gonna go ahead and give you the opportunity to respond via the bolo show because that's what we do right so if there's ever something you disagree with on the list we're gonna talk about it um and this is certainly one here now it's worth noting that like you mentioned before we, we talk about the is it or isn't it um a few things about this book this book immediately caught my eye because number one the lois lane series has been kind of under the radar good. Um, number two, some of the art on the Lois Lane book has been just outstanding, whether it's been variant covers or on this cover. To me, cover A is a standout, like artistic cover. Um, secondly, we talked about this whole Superman revealed storyline on the channel. Brian, it got you and I reading both Superman and Lois Lane. I even um, mentioned it when we talked about issue number seven. I was like, I, I kind of see how it ties in, but to me, the more important thing was at the end, there's this assassin that's like, hey, yeah. you want me? there's two people there. You're going to have to pay me more money. Right. So we talked about that when we reviewed issue seven. But when we talked about issue seven, we talked about issue seven, the information we had leading up to it, right? The, it, um, I think it was in the reader buzz section on the list. Um, when you look at the way it was covered by other outlets, um, it was covered – from a perspective of a reader buzz, right? People were amped up about the whole Superman 17, 18 thing. And they knew that Lois Lane had a tie in um, and the bleeding cool article had really played up uh, that ran on the Superman 
revealed thing at the time really played up Lois Lane seven. So it had a lot of hype going into it for that. And then like you had mentioned, it kind of fell flat because it didn't quite tie into the storyline the way we were all led to believe, but you had that cameo at the end that you mentioned. Um, it's funny. Then when we come around here to this release, uh, Lois Lane number eight, uh, yeah, I, this is one of those things I, I'm almost hesitant to say um, because it, it just gets you in trouble. But the reality of the situation is um, I think, and this is just my opinion, not negatively or positively. I just think this is what happens within the market that the spikes with this book are largely due to the fact that this was reported on by key collector. Um, this was a first appearance on their app. Um, this was a first appearance that then got reported by other places um, and then made it real easy um, for me to put it on the list as a first appearance, even though like we had already talked about it once I saw how the market was reacting to it. Because the, we, the first appearance thing is the trickiest thing on this list. Um, we said from the get go when we made the list and we used to have the kind of rules on um, comicbookinvest.com in the intro, it, it always said like, you know, we're only going to list a first appearance once. We don't want to list it twice, right? We don't want to do the whole cameo in first full thing. That's difficult. And you and I are well on record for our belief that that cameo thing doesn't exist, right? The character appeared in issue seven. That's the first appearance. Having said that, um, for whatever reason, whether it's my assumption that key collector, including it as a first appearance on a day, there wasn't a lot of first appearances um, in a book that's not really heavily ordered is probably the reason it, that it sold out at Midtown. And then once it sold out at Midtown, then people start to get that FOMO and they start hitting those LCSs. Like it sold out at Midtown. It's a first appearance on key collector. I got to get it. The thing starts flipping um, and it immediately hit $20. It's come down a bit. Uh, it's now selling for about $25 for a set of A and B, but that's still exceptionally for, especially on release day. Yeah, it's astronomical. I mean, I wouldn't pay that much. I enjoyed the issues. I enjoyed both issues seven and eight, but to me, my opinion, that character shows up in issue seven, right? Talks about it, sets the tone that she's there to kill both of them. And then number eight has her coming in to kill them. Right, and, and in all fairness um, to Key Collector, like they put out information later about how the character appears in issue seven. I think if I had to guess, that's probably in reaction to the responses they got um, as the day wore out of people saying, hey, that character appeared in issue seven, not, you know, is in the first appearance in eight. Um, but they, they delineated one a cameo and one a first full. Um, while they're probably right, I just don't like to do that because then you open your doors up for arguing and i just don't want to have have that argument but in there in all fairness to them it's not it's not their fault how people react to things um and it's not uh and they did come later and try to give like the full picture um but i i think that they have a great impact on the market so um if they said something was a first appearance people were chasing like i said not a lot of first appearances this week not a lot of true spec books this week. So those flippers are out there looking for something. Right. So we talked about that. We'll go into the next one now on first appearances. We got Ant-Man number one. This first appearance of that new character, several. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's, there's three different first appearances, all kind of Ant-Man, Ant-Man uh, world related. I actually kind of like this one, Brian. Um, first off, I like the Ant-Man movies. I, th I think there have been a fun departure from the typical tone of the MCU. Secondly, um, I, I like the character of Scott Lang. I think he adds a brevity to the uh, Avengers that's kind of necessary sometimes. Did you and, like the character more before Paul Rudd played him, or does Paul Rudd add a tangible emotional feeling to Scott Lang? Adds it. Um, the Ant-Man that I had been reading previously to the movies was not uh, Scott Lang. It's the one that... Um, the, that uh, Robert Kirkman had written. So, uh, Irredeemable Ant-Man. Yeah, so I had enjoyed Ant-Man. I think he adds something um, to the team, to different, naturally funny no matter what because he's a shrinking guy. But I think Paul Rudd in that character, yes, has absolutely taken it to the next level. And 
you know, I, I like that we stay on common tropes a lot of times on the channel. And one of the things we talk about a lot is world building. So I, I look at a, a book like this. Um, nobody was hyped for this book. Nobody was talking about this book. It's not in the variant buzz section. It's not in the first appearance section. Marvel had a couple number ones. They had a release this week of that Fantastic Four X-Men book. And you'll notice it's not on the list. And it is not on the list on purpose because nobody is talking about it. Um, this book gets in for the first appearances alone. I think it will be largely ignored by both retailers and collectors. And you just never know. I think they're going to make more uh, Ant-Man movies. And with Disney Plus, you never know. There's talk about Cassie Plus playing, spinning off, right? So these characters very well could show up later. This is one of those buy and throw in a box. And this is also one of those keep an eye out for in those discount sales online from both TFAW and, and, and Midtown and uh, my comic shop, but also keep an eye out in those, you know, when you're in the middle of the, of the summer at those conventions and people are dumping those moderns for a dollar, that's where you pull this Ant-Man book out. But either way, even at cover price, I think for three first appearances, I believe, for a cover price, that's a great buy and stash. So there it is. That's our first appearances for this week. Let us know in the comments. Did you guys pick these books up? Actually, let us know also what you think about Lois Lane number eight. Let us know how you feel. Do you think it's a first appearance? Do you think number seven was a first appearance? Can't go wrong. It's your money. It's your collection. So however you feel, that's truly what matters. But either way, we're going to take this time now to move on over into the reader buzz. And the first book we have up on the reader buzz this week is that Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number three. Say that five times fast. Now, this is another one where we can make that argument, Brian Cameo versus First Full. At the end of issue number two, we get kind of a uh, cameo splash page style reveal of uh, Shredder. And this is now, this is a continuing trend, right? We had the Joker or the... Uh, What's, what's his name? The Man Who Laughs. Yeah. Um, and that was the kind of Jokerized Shredder. And now we have Shredder as a Power Ranger. He, he's he got the, the Green Ranger suit. Um, and in issue number three, we get kind of that first full appearance. I have said before that I'm very bullish that this is media that could happen, right? This could be an animated movie on Netflix. It all lines up with the Nickelodeon Netflix deal with um, Hasbro having the contract for Power Rangers through Nickelodeon. So um, this is actually a first appearance that could hold water. But again, the argument is always going to be, is it two? Is it three? Either way, since we like to talk about all of the covers that kind of go into a book at one time, um, the key for this one, again, Brian, is those variants. Those Goni Montez helmet variants, uh, putting that set together. Um, and again, you know, one in 25 incentive uh for a goni montez you also have a one per store thank you variant and i only uh, have on the screen one of the one of the goni montez regular cover variants but we've shown them before where each time each turtle is holding the power ranger helmet right it, it, this is just going to be a stellar set to put together um boom is absolutely killing it with this um and if they do end up doing another volume it's going to really be interesting to see how they can kind of match and top my my suspicion would be it would go over to IDW, so then we'd get incentive variants, one in tens, et cetera, et cetera. Then the next one on the reader buzz that we're going to talk about is Adler number one. Now, I remember when we were doing Last Call, and we were doing our picks for Last Call, what, January 10th. This is one of the books that we, we had on the list. We took out the list because there was a couple books that we re replaced it with. But Adler number one, this still looks like a great book. Yeah, uh, it's always tough to kind of predict um, from like Titan Comics um, what is going to be. They get we talk about placement within previews. They get nice placement within previews. Um, they get their books do get kind of the eye of collectors, so they can spike at times. Um, they they can also be picked up by uh, um, retailers. At, at the same point, uh, their books are often very low printed. Uh, when they do spike, they they can spike something serious, but it's yeah. it's few they and often, far between. They often bottle rocket though; <laughs> they spike yeah. quick and then fizzle out. And that's kind of what I expected with this one when I saw it was sold out everywhere in all covers. Um, 
But it, honestly, I haven't seen the secondary market sales to really match up. We've talked about this before on the channel, this kind of phenomenon. And, and it's funny how um, the kind of progression of the comic market there was a time when a book sold out completely at Midtown. It immediately shot up on the secondary market, but people have gotten hip to the fact that sometimes maybe Midtown just didn't order a book heavy. Maybe Midtown didn't go hard on that book. And there were more orders for that book than they anticipated. Um, and just their buying habit isn't necessarily indicative of the market as a whole. Um, and But that's, I, that's what I think saw, because that's what I kept hearing from people. Oh, it sold out at Midtown, all covers. and. Um, while that is true, it looks like the book's going for about $8, which is above cover price, but not by much. Yeah, I think I like my favorite cover out of all of them be that kind of like that old vintage book looking that has the, the red logo because I'm not big on sketch covers and then the other covers just didn't really do it for me. But if I were to get any of them, it'd definitely be that the black one. But Either way, moving on into the reader buzz, the next one we have is Project Icarus. Right, this comes from um, Black Box Comics, a uh, small uh, press publisher who we've talked about before on the channel, we're actually big fans of. Um, they also uh, kind of took part in a giveaway to give some books away into our bolo boxes. Um, some so, so, uh, Patreon, some of them is Comics Family Patreon subscribers actually got their hands on some uh, black box comics uh, over the past few months. But, you know, I, they are most known for their smash hit Psycho List. I have championed the book Militia um, as being a book that I enjoyed, kind of a dark G.I. Joe. They also have a two-volume series called IT, um, and it's about kind of like money laundering and uh, bank fraud and that kind of thing. Um, so their titles have kind of been all over the board. Uh, very kind of nostalgic feeling. Um, this the cover one, art's always great, though. Yeah, really and great. The stories have been good that I've read. It, and it's it. There's a reason why. Um, slowly, I've started to pay more and more attention to them, and then we've been advocating more for that their products is because they really give me um, almost a Mad Cave Comics feel, where it's like um, it's a small company. You, when you talk to the people that run the company, you're talking to the top. Um, but it's, 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 you could tell it's a labor of love and you can tell they really want to get their books out there. So they've got a, a growing following. Um, this is a new number one. It, it's hard to tell, obviously, with independent comics. What's going to take off and what isn't? Um, like most synopsis, you read this one, it sounds like a movie, right? And, uh, you know, you're talking about a an ex-cop who's become a prison guard and, and now he's got to kind of snap back into action um but i think after psycho list there'll be a few more eyes on this book and it's one to keep an eye out for probably over the coming weeks there's very little activity of this book on ebay but there's only been one listing of this book uh and the, the, the person who's been listing has been selling it for cover price it's probably a retailer uh but cover price plus shipping um, I think this is just going to be a tough book to find. And if by the time issue two and three comes around, the hardcore readers stick with this book um, and you could hear the word of mouth spreading, that's when issue number one can shoot up in value. We saw that with Psycho List. That book got to like $30, $40 for issue number one at one point for the first print. Went to a second printing and then they ended up doing a web store exclusive variant as well. So that's something to keep an eye out for. And um, you know, if you're not seeing these black box comics at your local LCS, make sure you talk to your dealer, let them know, you know, you want to see, see black box represented, follow them on social media, hit them up, let them know. Um, they're another brand that's really great with talking to the consumer. Right. And if your LCS just flat out refuses to get the book, even if you ask for it, always check out black box website. Cause sometimes they, they sell some of the books on there as well. Definitely. And they have, like I mentioned, web store exclusives. Uh, so they have some exclusives to some of their titles uh, sold right, right on their web store. And we're going to move on into the reader buzz. Now this next book was one that I was actually excited to read and I was not let down. And we're talking about Star Wars Darth Vader number one. So this takes place right after Empire Strikes Back when Darth Vader's kind of upset that he didn't win Luke over when he told him he was his father and join him and run the galaxy together. So 
good book. Uh, Vader was kind of a little bit loony, but um, I enjoyed it. And spoiler alert, there's a big surprise at the end, and he goes back to uh, Coruscant and finds Padme. And, you know, we, we mentioned this before, but the previous Darth Vader series had a stronger reader buzz consistently on a month-to-month basis from the main Star Wars title. It'll be interesting to see as we move into the second volume on the reboot with Marvel, whether or not that is a trend that continues. I kind of suspect it is. Um, I think Darth Vader, there's so much you can do with him and that dark character. Um, he's so iconic to so many people um, that it's it's there's some things you can do uh, that lend itself to some good storytelling. So I would expect that. There wasn't a ton of variant buzz on a lot of the Vader variants that came out today. I love that Del Mundo one still. Yes, yes, absolutely. And, and, there, and it's, that's not to say there's not some nice cover art. There just really wasn't a secondary market push for it. And the um, cover A was in Hyak Lee, so. Yeah, and that's what you heard most about is, is the reader buzz of this book and people wanting to read it. Star Wars fandom within the comics community is growing. Um, and when I say fandom, I don't mean, obviously, fandom's always been there. Uh, but the readership and the, the interest in the comics, uh, which is when – Two, three, four, five years ago, back when we were on the G Plus message boards, um, when I was saying things like I really thought that Star Wars comics um, just was unlimited growth potential, and there would be naysayers. Um, I, for a while, I thought maybe they were right because it just the, these books were not gaining in value, but we're starting to see it of late. And I think I, I, I cannot underestimate what The Mandalorian has done for bringing Star Wars back into the kind of like the tip of everybody's tongue when it comes to pop culture right now. Yeah, I think it's a, a whole bunch of all of that. I think Mandalorian's a big push. Um, me, I just came back from Disney, Hollywood Studios and Disneyland also both have those Galaxy Edge Star Wars lands now with that huge Rise of the Resistance ride that you got to get there when the park opens and within five minutes, it's full for the day. Uh, plus you got news of more... Disney Plus coming back. Now they're here talking about they're taking a break from the movies and they're going to concentrate on, on the Disney Plus side of it, according to Bob Iger. Um, that, all that kind of rejuvenates, gets that Star Wars fandom back to going. I enjoyed Last Jedi. I know a lot of people didn't like it, but I thought it was a great movie that myself. And I'm, I'm back reading more Star Wars books. Um, I tend to read more of these, these one-offs rather than the actual Star Wars title. Uh, Rise of Kylo Ren, uh, Darth Vader. I've been reading the past few Darth Vader series. But either way, decent number one issue. Um, Darth Vader is kind of kooky, but it's still a fan that – it's a character that everyone can relate to and knows who it is. Next book we're talking about on the Reader Buzz is DC Crimes of Passion number one. This is one that also had a bunch of store exclusives floating around out there. Some great ones. Um, there's a Ryan Brown one out there that's pretty decent. Um, this was one that was nine ninety nine MSRP, right? Right, yeah, uh, nine ninety nine MSRP. It's got multiple stories in it um, from a lot of DC Comics writing heavyweights. Kind of cool to see stores do incentive or do uh, exclusives to this. Being that there's no incentive, being that it is a high cover price book, um, it was this was a book you and I talked about um, on the last call show. Uh, talking about how it was interesting how kind of this romance genre did see a bit of a renaissance in 2019 with the popularity of like those Matt Baker covers and that this could be a sneaky one because some of those um, these kind of like almost anthology style stories have sort of low print runs especially with the high cover price Um, I don't know what the effect of the the retail exclusive will do. Um, but yeah, there was there every, actually I'll say every exclusive I saw, I thought had exceptional cover art for this, this issue. Um, so shout out to those stores who went out on that limb to try to get a uh, romance comics popping again in the uh, modern market. Daredevil number 17 read this issue. Thought it was still a great issue, but I think the solicit might've grabbed people for this reader buzz because I didn't see anything that was so over the top that garnered everyone's attention for this book. Right. Well, and in time will tell. You read the book. Um, you're a regular reader of this title. You and I skimmed through it right before um, 
coming on the mic here together. And I certainly look at some of the, uh, the characters that seem to be popping up in this, in this story and say, well, yeah, but they're going, they're going somewhere with this. Yeah. Right. So there's legs there. Having said that, let's, let's be honest about why this got some serious buzz within the last 24 hours. And again, I can't blame anyone um, who I'm trying to find any other word other than the word speculate. Cause that's at this point, that's a negative word to me, but um, I'll say who, you know, um, poses a question. Anyone who sits and says, you know, could this be this character or could this be this? Anytime somebody does that. It's like the comic book version of that game telephone. Right. It's anytime somebody does that, um, which we all do that, right? You and I sit here, we get off the, we get off of recording and you and I sit and we shoot the shit for 30 minutes, an hour, and we will talk comics like friends do. And we'll be like, well, what if they do this? Or what if they do that? Um, and today's day and age, if a Jim comics or a, um, anyone, a key collector, a, a, a Mr. Bolo, uh, if, a, a, you know, if any of us say, Hey, I think this is going to happen. Um, and we have, you have a big enough platform, a snowball can get started. So I think we saw somebody mentioned, and I, and I don't want to quote who, because I don't remember who was the originator. The first person I saw who said this, but somebody said on uh, social media, which again is what this list is all based around, um, said that they thought that this would be lead to the return of vigil. If you remember vigil was a character who got real popular, a lot of spec flipping books around daredevil 608, 609, that area. Um, second printings were doing well. And then we ended up finding out that this character was like all in daredevil's mind, that it wasn't really, it didn't really exist. And all of that kind of deflated. Um, some of this could have been wishful thinking either way. It did not happen the way people had hoped. There was no vigil return. Um, you didn't get that spike, but we saw the spike in the secondary market because just in saying that people thought Vigil could return or, hey, this could be Vigil, somebody's coming back, I wonder if, sent people running to eBay with that FOMO. And that FOMO is serious. Now, if you spent $25 on this book yesterday or 18 bucks or 19 22 whatever you spent, and you took a shot and you missed today and you, you're cool with it because you just took that shot. It was worth it. It was worth the risk. Hey, I got a cool first appearance either way. More power to you. That's why we say buy what you like, because if you can miss and be happy with it, great. Um, but that's where you have to be careful for that type of knee jerk reaction. Um, everybody wants to get ahead of the game and that's how you make money, but you have to be careful. Even the best speculator the best conjecture of what could happen um you know we none of us get it right every time so uh daredevil 17 another great read daredevil kills it every month from that that's why it belongs in the reader buzz but another one where i think it was a bit of a, a false flag first appearance i saw uh today chip sadarsky uh posted a picture on twitter of Tom King reading Daredevil, Chip Zdarsky's tweet said, so this is how I found out I get fired. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, still a great issue. There's some good stuff going on in there. Um, if you're a fan of Hammerhead, my condolences. But either way, uh, great issue. Still enjoy that run. Moving on into that reader buzz. The last one on the reader buzz list is Dark Agnes. This is another book that we did talk about in the last call show. If you aren't familiar with the last call show is we do that every Friday night. That is what we're talking about <coughs> books that are hitting final order cutoff the following Monday. So we talk about books 23 days before release on average and we give 10 picks of the books that we like that are hitting final order cutoff and we call that the last call show. But Dark Agnes getting into that what Robert E. Howard yeah, yeah, expanding that Conan universe, getting into that Robert E. Howard, those kind of creations. I think Marvel really wants to expand that world and get the the Marvel fandom to be more um, accustomed to all of these supporting Conan characters. I don't think there was a ton of buzz on this book. You tended to hear the interest in this book coming from the same people who were interested in that like Queen of Bellet uh, series, uh, you know, you die hard Conan fans. who are going to read Serpent War, who are going to read Savage Avengers, uh, who are going to read 
anything that that features Conan the Barbarian front and center, you're all on board. That's who was talking about Dark Agnes. Um, but you never know. I, I, I think these it's going to be interesting how the movie rights to all of these characters kind of shake out. Um, but first solo series, you never know long term what what this could do or what this could be. But um, for right now, I think it's probably a book that we'll talk about for a couple of weeks and then we'll go away. Right. I did like um, what cover I think had Stephanie Hans, right? And then the, yeah, great cover. A Becky Cloonan cover as well, which if you're going to Baltimore Comic-Con 2020, they just announced that Becky Cloonan is going to be at Baltimore Comic-Con. And that was another book that sold out at Midtown, that Becky Cloonan cover. So there it is. That's that reader buzz. Do us a favor, click that thumbs up button for us. And now let's get into that variant buzz. The first book, or I'll say books that we're going to talk about on the variant buzz is that Power Ranger Ninja Turtles issue number one, second print and center variant. Yeah, we can kind of like uh, work in all of these turtles kind of in, 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 a, in a run here. Um, this was a big day for Boom Studios. And again, I've advocated that I really like when publishers do this. When they, when they issue three of Ninja Turtles, uh, Power Rangers, the crossover is hitting shelves. It has received critical acclaim. Um, obviously, on this channel, we've been big advocates for the series, but forget us. I, I defy you to go out there and find a, a real bad review for this um, all over YouTube, all over social media, all over the internet. Um, this has been an extremely well-received uh, series. If you're a fan of these two properties, especially um, this is really playing into the fandom very strong. It's a very natural crossover. So because of this, we're on issue three. It may be tough at, again, your LCS may still have issue one all over the shelf. Maybe. Um, I know I always get that in response when I say things like this, but in my area, you can no longer get issue number one. And with that being the case, it's hard to sell issue three and four and five if you don't have access to issue one and two. Um, so releasing on the same day as three, we get the second prints for no, both number two and number one. So the first one we're going to talk about is this number one second print incentives, which generally speaking, I've been on the record saying with these Marvel books, I don't like the incentives. I don't like the incentives because it makes the regular book worthless, right? Because stores have to like, they order in these large numbers to get these one in 25 incentives. Here's the thing. I actually like this one. And I know that I'm going to get called a hypocrite or a boom homer, but here's why. A couple of reasons. Number one, I like it because it's a one in 10 incentive. So it's not like dealers are having to come out of pocket such extreme amounts of money um, in an effort to get these incentives, then making the regular cover dead money. Secondly, the regular covers of the, of the number one second print Yes, you had a night version of the traditional cover A, which I think is cool. The day and night set, I posted it on my Instagram. I think it's a, a cool concept. Um, but beyond that, we had another Goni Montez book. So here's the thing with the Red Ranger cover. I think these Goni Montez books are going to be collected. People are going to want every one of these Goni Montez covers. So I think that that second print um, cover B – regardless is going to be popular. So I think the, the cover C, the one in 10 is really just kind of an add on um, to get dealers order these books, keep, get these books in stock. It's a, it's a true incentive. Um, they're incentivizing retailers to order these books so that the readers have these things when they come in. Uh, and then there was a one per store variant for it. I posted the, some of the sales from early this morning uh, as of Wednesday morning, when these books were hitting shelves, the one per store was selling uh, for like 45, 50 bucks. The one in 25s were selling for about the same. But just like we've talked about before, excuse me, the one in 10s, just like we've talked about before, some of these boom incentives are actually rarer than the one per store. And that's why we're, we were seeing the, the one in 10 trend higher than the one per store variant. It'll be interesting to see if that continues. 
on the exact same day, they release, as I said, the second print of number two. Um, again, giving us another Goni Montez variant, another, uh, uh, you know, with the yellow uh, Ranger helmet, we have another cover that can be added to this set. Um, I think if you're, if you're buying these helmet covers, this is just, it's absolute comic crack. You can't pass up on it. You're going to have to grab uh, this cover. So shout out to Boom. They did a great job. Um, really killed it with it between coming out with three and all the incentives uh, that came along with that, along with uh, the two second print and the number one with kind of the unique release of the second print for number one. They did a great job. And that black and white edition that came out a week ago, which we didn't get to talk about because we were off. Um, that's kind of a, a under the radar release. Jack sounds like we're, Jack sounds upset we were off. It was a it was a weird night. The night that we usually record, it was a weird. It was a weird I could night. See the, like that picture of the the narco's meme. Yeah, <laughs> where he's just standing on the, like. <laughs> that's you, like wanting to shoot the bolo when I'm. <laughs> yeah, Brian's out partying and having fun. I'm sitting there like, what do you do on Wednesday nights? <laughs> I, 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 bachelor on. I guess I guess you watch wrestling at normal times and not yeah, at three dynamite. in the night. Yeah, I was. I, you know, I'm so used to watching at two in the morning when we're done recording. <laughs> Either way, moving on to that variant buzz. The next one we're talking about is that Conan Battle for the Serpent Crown. This is that incentive variant, right? Right, one in one hundred uh, Bushema variant. Uh, these Conan uh, kind of high ratio Serpent War related books have done exceptionally well. Um, again, I still say that that Finch one is a, um, an outlier because we're looking at, uh, you know, Finch Moon Knight. That's just classic. That's selling for about 300. Yeah, it's just a great looking cover, but. Selling for like 300, $350 right now. Um, but this, this Bushema, we're looking at like about a hundred. Um, I think it's a hidden gem, right? Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a classic. Um, so you're talking about classic artists who's worked with this character before um, a lot of built-in fans our old school Conan fans are going to like this one um, it immediately got some buzz I'm actually surprised it's not doing more than ratio to one in 100 selling for about 100 but um, this one keep an eye out for I don't think a ton of stores ordered 100 books of this title um, this could easily be one that dries up and again I don't think Conan uh, collecting is going anywhere. Uh, it seems more and more people are being indoctrinated into the world of Conan the Barbarian, and I think that's going to continue. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to read this issue yet, but I'm, I, I want to read it because a lot of times that's kind of what I base my opinion on the variants. Also, is rarity or scarcity is one thing, but if it's a cover like that and the story sucks, I have no interest in it. Yeah. And there's a lot of that. There's a lot. There's a lot of that in the market where um, people are paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars for that one piece of paper that wraps around the outside of the book. But the next one we're talking about in the variant buzz is that Marvel Avengers Hulk, that Park variant. Right, one in twenty-five variant. Um, great looking cover. These video game v books are always weird. Yeah. Um, you never know if it's going to be popular or not. Um, every time one of these game books gets released, I get a bunch of messages like, I think this could get hot. Um, but I think that we've gone to that well several times. Having said that, this one seems to be selling for about 60 to $75. Um, we're obviously well over ratio. It's another book. If I was running an LCS, which is what I like to put myself in, I like to think about it like that. Um, if I'm running an LCS in my area of the country and knowing what, you know, these comics cost and looking at this release week, how many of these books would I order? And I, I, it, I don't know if I would order 25 of this book. Maybe I love the cover art. So I ordered 25 just to try to make one variant flip. Um, but either way, anything more than that would be nuts. I don't see, I don't see a lot of that. Especially so. if you're not hearing much news about it. Cause I mean, you got to put your order in. It's not like you're ordering them. Right. Monday night. <laughs> no, but this is, this is definitely, um, this is a four subscriber type of book, right? You're not going to go to many LCSs. I mean, yeah, if you go to your third eyes or your midtowns or something like that, you may see a fat stack of them. They service a large number of collectors, but 
if you go to your average small town LCS, this is the type of book where you see two on the shelf, three on the shelf, um, and they've maybe ordered six or seven more for their subscribers who, who maybe are Hulk collectors and they want everything Hulk. Um, but that's about it. And like I said, I could see myself going out on a limb to try to get one incentive maybe, but then I, again, I'm flipping that on eBay to get my money out of the book. So that, you're not even seeing that available um, within the shop or within the market. So it, this is, this could be a tough one long-term um, for the, for those Hulk completionists. If character completionists really truly even exist, I don't even know anymore. We saw the, the run builder die several years ago. We may be seeing the character completionist die next as um, so many releases come out. Then the next one on the variant buzz list is that Hawkeye Freefall. This is the second print. Right. Um, now, there's, I will say Hawkeye Freefall number one doesn't have a lot of secondary market heat. Um, there was some talk amongst people within the speculation communities about this book, just in the fact that it's got that um, that kind of Camilla Khan treatment in that you have the first appearance of a new um, a uh, new Ronin, and then you get Ronin on the cover of this book. So I'm not a big fan of like a new version of this characters. I don't think I think they're a dime a dozen and they don't all pan out. Um, there's been other Ronins other than Clint Barton. So like, this is not yeah. like, like Robert De Niro was one. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not um, super new news, uh, you know, I, but if they ever do something and this is a super huge if, but if they ever do something with this version of the Ronin character, just based on what we've seen in history, whether it's Null or um, Miss Marvel, this would be the book to get um, being the first appearance with the character on the cover. It seems like later printings have been accepted in the market now as first appearances. So I, I would expect that. Uh, certainly not for everybody, not one that's, eh, it's kind of one that I go, eh, but it had people talking. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't see it. I didn't think it sold enough. I was oblivious to think that it sold enough to warrant a second print, but that's but that's Marvel, and you know we've we've done so much time talking about independent books and their in their um the release of late printings um, and why late printings get released, and we just talked about that with the turtles. Marvel very like on the opposite spectrum, very contrarian. Um, will literally release a announce a second printing with hundreds to thousands of copies of a first printing still sitting at diamond. Yep. That means that forget about them selling out at your retailer, which you guys always love to quote me. Oh, my LCS had 10 copies on the shelf. That don't mean shit. What, what matters is how many copies are sitting at diamond. If there's none at diamond, later printings are going to happen. But when diamond's sitting on hundreds of copies, um, you know, you shouldn't see a second print because if somebody needs one, the first print should be available. Marvel don't give a damn. They'll just keep pumping them out. They'll go to a fourth print with first print still sitting available. Yeah. If, if they think you'll buy it, they'll do it. And look, they make they know they're not stupid. They put the, the first appearance on the cover. Boom. People are talking about it and buying it. Yeah. It's Glow vs. Babyface number four. And, of course, we're talking about that Catherine Nodet variant. Yeah, and, I, you know, I'm going to go ahead and make a, another plug here for the last call show. Um, and we're going to make a major one at the end, but Glover's Babyface was a series before it started that you and I talked about, um, foreseeing its popularity. We were interested in it just from a wrestling perspective, right? We're, we're wrestling fans. We're wrestling and the creative team, right? In the creative team. But we also were smart enough to notice, Hey, these one in tens are going to be done by cat noted we have experience with all of our coverage of independent comics, remembering what she did on that Amber Blake. Um, she's also been somebody who we've had some like minor correspondence with. She's uh, she pays attention. She retweeted the bolo list today, uh, liked it on Instagram, liked it on Twitter. Um, so shout out to cat noted. So because of these things we've said, you know, that I could see this getting popular. Sure enough. This isn't killing the game, but it's like the last one where it's, yeah, it's $20, $25. You're talking two, two and a half times ratio. Um, 
on a wrestling television series comic. It's not a comic based on wrestling. It's a, it's a comic based on Netflix. Uh, a fictionalized take on a real events that of a wrestling promotion from the 80s. Yeah, I watched uh, Glow yeah. back in the day. It yeah, like, you know. What is this? Right, right. Um, but even even the show is loosely based, right? They take they take some of the characters and themes and tropes. Um, I think they blew through the entire events of Glow in season one. So then they had to kind of make everything up beyond that. But uh but yeah, so we thought this would just be fun, but we were smart enough to be like, hey, look at these cat noted variants. Sure enough. Um, if you had been buying these up, you'd, you'd be doing pretty well. And they're retaining value. People are still buying issue one, issue two. And with that, that wraps up the variant buzz section. So we just have one more section left. And that, of course, is Jack's long-term play. Long-term play for this week is Agritsuko number one. Yeah, and I got to be honest with you. Now, usually I get here to this point, right? I'm, I'm filled with information. Um, Brian's often called this not the long-term play of the week, the long-winded play of the week. Uh, and I will dispense all of the information and all of my beliefs on a book. True, true story about this. I don't know anything about anime or manga. Um, I have a very uh, limited knowledge of that uh, i have a couple brothers who are into it um and just kind of the stuff that i'll get from them is about my entire knowledge base of it having said that i buy funko pops i collect i sell funko pops so i've seen agrisuko exclusives in stores i've i've been familiar with it just through seeing it through toys um through seeing it in netflix when i'm flipping through looking for something to watch um so I was aware of its existence. Um, flash forward to when this gets announced. I said to you when we were recording last call, um, I said, when we, you came out with the, that initial list of last call, and I told you, I said, we need to add this Agrisuko book. And you were like, I don't know anything about that, whatever. And I was like, I don't know anything about it either. But I've been noticing this trend, this at comic conventions all year this year, the anime crowd is getting larger and larger and larger and larger. I went to a few conventions where it was hard for a comic book dealer selling true comics to do well because there's so many of these kids in these anime cosplay. They were dominating the show. Um, it, that was kind of the main focus. Uh, you know, and my, my experience with these things is, is My Hero Academia or Dragon Ball Z, some of these big, you know, uh, pillars of anime. I don't know anything about Agrisuko other than it's a, a female-led character who's like a fox. Um, and like I said, Netflix TV show. I think it's multiple seasons it's been going on. Um, and Ami Press hit a home run several years ago with the Rick and Morty license. And it was very similar the way that that book was released. They sat back, they watched Rick and Morty be successful. It's not like they jumped on Rick and Morty from the moment season one started. Um, and then they saw a property that they felt like they could market. And it's turned into a comics phenomenon. And when we were talking on the last call show, I said, man, I don't want to make the comparison to Rick and Morty. I said, ah, but screw it. I'm going to make the comparison to Rick and Morty. And it's, and it's because of exactly what I've seen happen today. Um, there are a lot of fans, and I've talked about this on the channel in this segment specifically, respect people's fandoms. There are just a lot of fans of manga, of anime, of this type of, of culture of comics. Um, and while that may not be the type of thing that me, Brian, or the people that we associate with talk about on a daily basis, I knew these people were out there, and I knew they were going to buy this book. And what I knew even more importantly is, even though you and I talked about it on the last call, Brian, how many of our regular listeners do you think listen to us? How many people do you really think? And I didn't expect you to, so I'm, don't, I'm not talking down to any of you. But I didn't expect people to go, Agrisuko, that's the book I need to put a pre-order in for before Monday, before this last call. Um, because and I just, it's not going to appeal to our typical audience. But There were for, quite a few, though, that did comment and said that because of that, they did order some. 
And I'm glad that, and I'm, that makes me feel good. That, that means you have trust in us. Um, that does make me feel good because, um, you know, I said that I felt like that it had that opportunity for that, the supply just not to meet the demand. And sure enough, that's what we saw. It was limit one per customer from Midtown very early. It went to sold out. Um, it went to highs as high as uh, $40, $50 for the set of cover A and cover B. That has gone down like we see as like the books have been released, but down to like 30 bucks. So this is a, a, a $30 book or a $30 A and B set, $15 book, right out the gate, the day of release, you're not going to see more showing up in shops. It's gone. Yeah, what do you think? Maybe 6,000, 9,000? Yeah. It's if that, big. yeah, it's, it's really hard to, to, to project print run. Um, but it'll, it'll definitely be sub 10,000, I would imagine. And this is a book that unlike the typical indie book where it comes out and then by issue two and issue three, people aren't looking for issue number one anymore. And it, it, you're waiting for the, the, the option. You don't wait for the option for this one. It's already been optioned. It's I'm, already- I'm curious what, you know, it'll be a big sign also is it we're getting into con season and if this popularity picks up and you start seeing con exclusives for this Akrasuko, like you did with Rick and Morty and everything like that, then, then it's kind of like, okay, Got something going on there. I would expect to see it. I actually did a little search um, about an hour before we got on the mic. I was just curious, did any shops do a store variant for this one? Because that could be a book that gets hot. I could not find any. Doesn't mean they weren't out there. Um, Because Omnipress, Brian and I have done some work with some store variant programs. And Omnipress is one that's not hard to make, get a variant made. They they have low print run requirements. so sometimes stores will take a chance on an Omni Press book that they think has some legs. I think if Brian and I were shop owners and Simpleman's Comics was a retail shop, I would have looked at Brian and said, hey, man, let's do a 300 print variant. Um, let's, let's take that risk. And I think if you'd have done that, man, you'd be caking off today. But uh, this is a book I think has long-term potential because however this series grows is how I think that this book will grow or decline in value. And it's very hard for me to judge, and I say this with a huge asterisk because I'm not an anime fan. I'm not an expert, so I don't know if this is a property that is gonna increase in, in fandom over the next five years. Um, but like I said, I will say, people are chasing the Funko Pops, people are watching the show on Netflix. That makes me believe that this is a property that's here to stay. Um, we very well could see around issue three, four, five, six, that issue number one, you go back, you look on eBay and go, oh my God, I can't believe that's a 75 or an 85 or a hundred dollar book. That's what we saw with Rick and Morty. And I see it as a possibility, at least with this book. Yeah. And we talked about it in the last call and we saw that, that it could possibly have that trend. But I also said that this is outside my wheelhouse. It doesn't appeal to me. So I've, I've pre-ordered zero copies. I don't have zero co- any copies. I didn't buy any today. This, is, this isn't a book that appeals to me, but um, I could see like, maybe I should have bought one for my kids because my kids like this type of stuff. Like, yeah, my oldest likes that damn yokai watch and Pokemon yeah. and all this type. But either way, um, I'm glad to see a book like this do good. I'm glad the people that if they – Saw it on the last call or didn't see it on the last call, but pre-ordered it anyways. Congratulations. I think you hit it out of the park with this one. But me personally, I always say buy what you like. This isn't a book that I liked, so I didn't buy it. Yeah, and again, that's the whole point is that that's why we did the last call, right? We're very proud of that show. Um, we, we caught a lot of flack, and we were told that talking about books pre-FOC was going to ruin any opportunity for things like this to happen. And it isn't true. We talked about Marvel action, Spider-Man. We told you, Hey, got a funny feeling about this one. Sure enough, that funny feeling came to fruition. Uh, we talked about Kylo Ren. We said, Hey, this stuff with Snoke, this is going to get people's attention. We saw what happened with that. There's countless more since, since that show has existed from, the glow baby face that we just talked about to Agrasuko where we have said, Hey, we got, we got, we're, we got a funny feeling about this. This is what we've seen. The whole point of the show is just to give you our experience and wisdom and what we see when we look at a previews list from a collector, from a fan, 
from a, a, a speculator, investor, flipper, from every perspective, what we see when we look at this. And we try to impart that to you. And we hope that you are watching that. If you're not, uh, be sure to check that out because there's just so much value within that. We're, it's every Friday. We're giving you a three-day window before uh, that last call, that final order cutoff where you can order books, get those guaranteed books in from your LCS, usually get the largest discount percentage that you can get by placing your orders pre-FOC. So um, we hope some of you were able to take care of that with AgroSuco and you made five, seven times your money. Let us know in the comments section if that's any of you out there. Um, and uh, yeah, so definitely check us out on the last call show. And we got the adult Kool-Aids, man. We have a little fun, we kick back. Yeah, and I'll also say, we're always offering our opinions, but please, please, please don't just buy stuff off of our opinions. Yes. I would, I would recommend, one, always say, buy what you like. If you don't like it in your collection, don't buy it. You don't have to. But if it's something that you're interested in and something that we say that might kind of influence you towards that, also do a little bit more research and find out it's something that you, it's ultimately, it's your money. You're the one that's spending it. You're the one that added that book or you're going to try to sell that book, whatever you're going to do with it. Do a little bit more research and don't just anyone, anyone that says anything or anyone that you're getting information yes. from, take it, but do your own research as well before you buy stuff and add stuff to your collection. Because we always say stuff and it's never something, nothing ever, ever pans out 100% of the time. No. And we talked about that on this episode. We talked about that with both the Daredevil release and the Lois Lane release. Um, that And that's just a reality you need to take all this information that you've got at your disposal, whether it's social media, whether it's YouTube um, and use it as a tool in your arsenal, but ultimately make your own own decision. And that's our goal with the last call show. My goal personally with what I do on the last call show or what I do here with this long-term play is just to give you a different view. I try to pick things like Agrisuko that I feel like others aren't going to talk about. Others aren't going to highlight. And yes, we want you to, you know, you, you, if you believe, if you listen and you agree with that logic and you agree with that play, by all means, make it. But by, by no means do we expect you just to plug and play what we, what we say. Uh, but it is something that we do really and truly as a service to the community. Um, and we're, I'm very proud that we were able to talk about this book 23 days in advance of its release uh, with the confidence that we did. But either way, that's Jack's long-term play. And that's also the Bolo show. You heard us talk about the last call a lot tonight. That will be tomorrow night at 9 p.m. with that live premiere on Simple Man's Comics YouTube channel. With that being said, this is Brian and Jack, and we'll see you guys in the next video.